Class 6. Today I will be doing the continuation of the same chapter that is the Gupta Empire. In my previous video, I have already explained you about the Gupta rulers, uh, their achievements and their conquest. So uh, today I will be explaining uh, you about the topic Gupta administration, uh, trade and economy, religion and art and architecture of the Gupta period. So let's begin. The Gupta administration, the topic is Gupta administration and in this topic what I wanted to explain you is that Gupta rulers were uh, able administrators, okay. The king was the head of the administrative system and the empire was divided at three different levels that is number one provinces, number two districts, number three villages okay so the provinces were looked after by the princes of a royal family and they were often appointed as the governors of the provinces and they were assisted or helped by the group of officials called Kumara Matyas, okay so the provinces were further divided into uh, districts or vicious so in a textbook it's written vicious that means districts and it was looked after or assisted by a group of officials called Vishapatis okay so each district was divided into a number of villages and each village was independently looked after by the village headman so headed by headman that means village headman so here in uh, the gupta administration i want to add one uh, small point that is uh, the gupta rulers had less control over their officials compared to that of a Mauryan king. So uh, the Guptas decentralized the administration. So, uh, so the term decentralized, which means the transfer of power or authority to the local government. So the governors, uh, they become very powerful and uh, started behaving like an independent rulers and with no uh, uh, loyalty to the king so that is why that uh, the decentralization of uh, administration was one of the major causes that led to the disintegration or downfall of the gupta empire so next topic that we are going to discuss is trade and economy so uh, uh, great progress was made in the field of uh, agriculture as well as in the field of uh, trade and economy. So agriculture continued to be the main occupations and one of the most important industries was the textile industries where silk, linen, wool, cotton were produced in large quantities okay so other important industries were pottery making uh, stone cutting carving and metal works especially gold silver and copper so trade uh, 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 the gupta kings they had a trade relation uh, with other countries such as southeast asian countries uh, as well as um, uh, africa and some mediterranean countries so next topic in your textbook is education so uh, uh, gupta rulers uh, you know, they encouraged education and learning so liberal grants were given to the educational institutions so the grants mean sum of money given to the educational institution one of the major contribution of the gupta rulers was the establishment of the nalanda university so children have a good look at this nalanda uh, uh, image of nalanda university so this is the image of a nalanda university uh, which is a, a center of buddhist learning but there there uh, the other subjects were also taught at this university like uh, you know, Vedic literature, astronomy, um, uh, grammar, philosophy were taught at this university. 
after this uh, education heading you have the heading that is religion so we will talk about when we talk about the religion of uh, gupta period uh, the gupta uh, kings they revived hinduism or uh, hinduism regained its popularity during the gupta period and number two point is that the hindus they worshiped lord shiva and vishnu okay uh, most of the gupta kings they uh, they were the followers of vaishnavas okay vaishnavas means worshippers of lord vishnu number four point is that gupta kings they perform ashvamedha yagna or horse sacrifice number five point is that gupta kings uh, uh, they were a, uh, they were staunch follower of hinduism but they had a tolerance towards other religions too and puranas uh, were rewritten in sanskrit during the gupta period so here i am going to show you the image of our Vishnu temple or Das Avatara temple, which is at <coughs> Devgar, okay, which is at Devgar, and in your textbook uh, page ninety nine also, you get to see this um, uh, picture there in your textbook also, okay. So this is the image of a Das Avatara temple uh, at Devgar. So the term Das Avatara means Das means ten, and Avatara means uh, the incarnation of a Hindu god. next topic is scientific progress so rapid progress was made in the field of science during the gupta period uh, children uh, have a look um, uh, at this image this is the image of aryabhatta who was a great astronomer and mathematician he calculated the value of pi okay and he also discovered that uh, earth revolves around the sun and he also found out the causes of lunar eclipse and solar eclipse so the concept of uh, zero and decimal system was one of india's greatest contribution to mathematics okay so uh, 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 you can say that during the gupta period the rapid progress was made in the field of science next topic that we are going to discuss is development in literature so number one point is that kalidasa whose work include the famous play abhigyanan sakuntalam and the epic poem megadutta okay so number two puranas were rewritten in sanskrit number three the panchatantra was compiled by vishnu sharma number four mirch katika our drama it was written by shudraka so uh, now uh, i am going to explain you a little bit about uh, the uh, pronunciation of abhigyanan sakuntalam okay so children you must be finding it a little bit difficult in pronouncing the word abhigyanan sakuntalam okay so uh, a b h i so in your textbook j n a n a so you have to pronounce j n a n a s gyana so abhigyanan sakuntalam uh, if you want to say it in a simplified way you can say sakuntala uh, uh, written by uh kalidasa next topic that we are going to discuss is art and architecture during the gupta period okay so art and architecture uh, and most of the paintings during the gupta period was based on religious themes Uh, religious themes only okay so in my uh, previous uh, uh, slide i have already shown you about uh, dasavara uh, dasavatara avatara temple uh, or the vishnu temple at devgar now this is the image of a buddhist chaityas uh, uh, at ajanta caves okay the term chaityas means the place of worship in buddhism so after this i'll be showing you the uh, slides of um, uh, some of the uh, paintings that found it uh, in ajanta caves so these are the cave paintings uh, found uh, found at ajanta caves This is the Chaityas. This is the carving of Buddha in Ajanta Caves, India. 
So these are all the uh, cave paintings that you will find it at Ajanta Caves, which is in Maharashtra. So children, we have come to the end of this chapter. So the Gupta Empire uh, is notable for its uh, contribution towards art and architecture, uh, literature and science. Hence, Gupta period is recognized as one of the most important periods in ancient Indian history. Thank you.